Hello everyone, welcome back to Prompt Engineering Podcast. In the previous video, we'll learn about zero, one, and few short prompting. We'll also learn about benefits of cues and hints and learn perspective prompting in detail as well. Now, in this video, we are going to learn some more prompting techniques like contextual prompting, emotional prompting, and laddering prompting. These techniques will definitely boost your productivity by applying them in daily life tasks you perform via ChatGPT. So let's get started. Tectonic Shift Shaping the Future with Innovation So let's actually start with contextual prompting. Contextual prompting simply means that as you provide extra information to your prompt. So as you set the context of your prompt, you add specific extra information on the cultural, historical, or situational factors that should be taken into account by ChatGPT as it generates a response. For example, you could have a prompt like this. Here I want ChatGPT to generate a summary of the evolution of the combustion engine over the years since its inception. But I also specifically want ChatGPT to take the current shift towards renewable energy and electric vehicles into account. And that's the part where I do provide some extra historical and situational context because otherwise ChatGPT might focus on the history of the combustion engine without taking the current changes that are taking place into account. So adding this extra information about this extra context into which the response should be put or the extra context of the current circumstances that should be considered, adding this extra information can be very important for certain kinds of prompts. And as always, of course, not for all prompts, this is definitely not important for all prompts, but for some prompts, taking current circumstances or specific aspects into account could be important and with contextual prompting, you in the end do add this extra information. So therefore, in the end, contextual prompting is, of course, still only about adding extra information about setting the context of the prompt. And it's a specific kind of extra information which is easy to overlook or which you might not always think about, but which can make certain responses for certain prompts way better. Like here, for example, where we do get this extra information about the impact of the combustion engine, both the positive and the negative impact, and we get a whole paragraph dedicated to the current shift towards the renewable energy and electric vehicles. Now, another prompting technique that can sometimes be useful for certain kinds of problems or prompts is emotional prompting. And the idea here is that the response generated by ChatGPT should consider the emotional state or tone of the user's query. For example, if you ask ChatGPT to write an email response for a customer complaint, that could look something like this. Here with emotional prompting being used, we are telling ChatGPT that it should take the sentiment and tone of the customer into account when drafting its response. Now, it might be doing that without us telling it to do it. That's absolutely possible. But explicitly telling ChatGPT to take that into account, so forcing ChatGPT to take that into account definitely also is not a bad idea and can save us an extra follow-up message or an extra prompt, which we might have to send otherwise. So here with this emotional prompting technique used, I do indeed get a response which actually understands that this customer seems to be quite angry and which therefore is drafted such that we hopefully calm this customer down and we provide a solution that works for the customer and kind of make sure that everybody is cool again. Now, another special technique I want to take a look at here is laddering prompting. And the idea here is to break up a complex problem that would probably require a very long and detailed prompt, which could lead to ChatGPT to lose context and to lose information and produce a suboptimal response. To take such a problem and instead split it up into multiple smaller problems and prompts, which you then send them step by step to ChatGPT, so that you get solutions for different smaller prompts which you can then combine manually to, for example, like in this case, build this Node.js application. And of course, this technique is very important if you are a developer. 
Here in this example, it is all about creating such a Node.js REST API, whatever that may be, but it's all about that. But of course, this technique can be very useful whenever you have any kind of more complex problem, since it allows you to get these modular focused individual building blocks, which you can get by writing highly specific prompts for the different building blocks and which you can then compose together to the overall final answer or final program that you want to have. So for example here, instead of trying to create this entire API in one long prompt, which probably would fail or which probably would still be missing some details, which we as the person using ChatGPT might have also simply forgotten. Instead of doing that, here I am just starting by telling ChatGPT that I want a basic Node.js REST API with these four endpoints. And that in this first step, I don't want any actual code, instead just some dummy code. Since it's really just about setting up this general API with its endpoints, and of course this specific example here would definitely require some programming experience. This lettering technique can be helpful for any kind of more complex problem. So here, for example, in this first step, I would have gotten this output here. Again, this definitely might differ for you, but that's what I got here. And I could, for example, follow this up with this message here where I now send a new prompt to ChatGPT, describing a new problem that should be solved by ChatGPT, some new code that should be generated by ChatGPT. And of course, since I'm doing this here in this existing conversation, these old messages are still taken into account by ChatGPT. And it still has those as context, but it's now focusing on this new problem here. While still combining it with that context it already has to solve this new problem, which makes this laddering technique, this laddering prompting technique pretty effective. Now, of course, we could continue here to build the overall application, but that's of course not the goal of this lecture or video here. Instead, the goal was to make sure that you are aware of this laddering technique, that you know this strategy and that you're able to use this strategy in cases where you have a very complex problem that you want ChatGPT to solve. Because in such cases, it's often better to break it up into multiple smaller prompts and problems instead of sending one huge prompt in one step to ChatGPT. That's all for today. Please stay tuned as so many more exciting videos are coming soon on Tectonic Shape. See you soon again. Until then, bye-bye.